D, wait for it. Light bulb. Check out the name tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. What's up, nerds? So um, I wanted to talk about this subject because I um, recently, well, when, when it came out, the opening weekend of Fantastic Beasts 3, I went and seen it in the theater. And I personally liked it. I thought it was very good. I thought it was a, 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 the right direction that this series should have taken. Um, but I do feel like the series is, is geared more toward as adults than it is kids, unlike Harry Potter, which I felt like is more like a coming of age kind of story. So younger kids could relate as, as you know, Harry moved along. But as for me, I really love the wizarding world. I love it. I, I, I love being in it. I, if you can't tell it's my jam a hundred percent. Um, and I, um, and I just, I think that there's been a lot of talk, you know, with JK Rowling and her tweets. Now, whether or not you are on JK Rowling's side is besides the point that, that has nothing to do with this conversation. But what I've seen a lot of, and I'm going to go through this article here, um, and this is this is an older article and an older conversation. It's just I, I saved these things on my desktop, and then I, I, I didn't have time to get to it because YouTube is very demanding. Um, but, uh, I, but I did want to talk about it, and I, I'm trying to write my review for the third movie. I might have to wait until it comes out on HBO Max to, to sit down, and because I only saw it the one, so I'm trying to remember exactly how things went. Anyways, so a lot of the talk is should J.K. Rowling sell the wizarding world ip to warner brothers and there's been some talk about this i.e like uh george lucas did with star wars and i do want to talk about this in length but i want to go through this and i want to tell you my my official like opinion about the whole the whole subject because i have very strong thoughts about this and you will not be able to change my mind uh and i know myself well enough to know that you can't change my mind um, so for this, I'm reading in this article from far out, I will leave in the description down below. Before I get started on this, I just want to say that if you like what I do here and you enjoy independent content here on YouTube, please consider subscribing to my channel. YouTube is always changing up their algorithm and small channels like mine, we always get shoved to the back of the line. So please ask that you like, share, and subscribe, and I thank you in advance. Now that I've said all that, I want to read this article. Now this is, comes from Callum Russell. Um, Okay, it says why J.K. Rowling needs to relinquish control of the Harry Potter franchise. Um, and I'll get into that if they don't mention it in this article because I can't remember, but I, I uh, yeah, okay. About her deal and everything. Okay, so when you consider some of the biggest and most lucrative movie franchises of the 21st century, no doubt the likes of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Star Wars, and the Fast and Furious come to mind. It's easy to forget, however, that just over a decade ago, the answer to this question would be much different, with the Harry Potter franchise dominating the contemporary box office, ranking in $7.73 billion uh, in total from 2001 to 2011. And that's so true. Um, the first th three movies, the first two movies I didn't see in theaters. Uh, but the third movie, I only saw it once. The fourth movie I saw, I think, three or four times. And then the one I watched most was seven times, and that was the sixth one, or no, six times. And that was the sixth one, and that was only because I kept getting dragged to it. That's my least favorite movie out of all of them. Anyways, he, creating a fervent excitement from children and adults alike across the world, the Harry Potter books and movies now include Under the Wizarding World umbrella, created an internationally recognized brand that has since splintered off into an emergence of theme parks, theatrical experiences, and video games. Though whilst the brand continued to bulge, the material for the Wizarding World remained stagnant, with little for fans to consume other than the original Harry Potter movies. And that's that's true. That's true. Written by the, the then-beloved author of the original books, J.K. Rowling, the release of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them in 2016 was supposed to spark a new era for, for the franchise, fueling in turn more merchandise, more material, and more fandom. 
Instead, with the release of the third film in the series in 2022, it appears as though the Fantastic Beast movies have done more to tarnish the brand than enhance its quality. I disagree with that 100%. Um, I don't think that it's the Fantastic Beast uh, uh, brand or uh, uh, franchise and movies that have tarnished, have tarnished is a bad word. Um, the franchise, I think that it's the fans. I think that it's the fans that have tarnished this franchise and they have, uh, they, they've let um, personal stuff tarnish the franchise. Um, okay, based in part on J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter tie-in guidebook of the same name, the Fantastic Beast series was one built on false promises with none of the meticulous plotting of the novels to rely on. Despite the author herself writing the screenplay, which I have said this is a, that was a bad choice uh, and everything, but uh, go ahead. The films are instead a messy, mosaic. I don't know what that word is, of ill-fitting characters, needless storylines, and scant originality that relies on nothing more than uh, morsels of Wizarding World trivia to justify its existence. Um, I would agree with that. I would agree with that a little bit. Not 100%. I mean, needless storylines is not, I don't think there's needless storylines. I definitely think the story between Grindelwald and uh, Dumbledore is not needless. Um, the one between, um, oh, what's his name? Ezra Miller's character. I can't think off the top of my head. That one was, uh, I, I mean, whatever. Okay. Um, I think it ties into it a little bit and it, it does, it was, it's in, it was interesting from the first one. Anyways. Okay. Let's go on. In the material of the movies, uh, if the material of the movies weren't enough, actor Johnny Depp was kicked from the production of the second film in the series, The Secrets of Dumbledore. In November 2020, due to the ongoing lawsuit with Amber Heard, uh, yeah, don't like her, that marked him as a potential domestic abuser. In addition, J.K. Rowling sparked an internet firestorm in 2019 when she posted tweets uh, deemed to be transphobic by the internet community. Um those are true. That's that's a true statement. Uh, people who menstruate, I'm sure there used to uh, to be a word for those people. Someone uh, is this her tweet? I, I I wish they would have. Okay, I wish someone would help me out. Uh, Wumbin, Wimpun, and Wumud. Uh, the writer commented on Twitter in 2020, causing outrage from the LGBT community and others. Meanwhile. As recently as March 7th, 2022, Rowling came against recent uh, legislation for women and girls discussing the likely ne uh, negative consequences if the bill were to pass that made it easier for transgender people to identify as their chosen gender. Now, I don't want to get into that. Um, you can go and see that stuff. Uh, that has that has to do with this kind of thing. Oh, they do mention um George Lucas. Um, but uh, as far as my opinion goes, I'm neither here nor there with that kind of stuff. I can separate the art from the artist when it comes to that kind of thing. So as far as what ha what J.K. Rowling does in her personal life, uh, I did, for me personally, that does not play any uh, role in when it comes to the Wizarding World slash Harry Potter, the franchise. But this day and age, people are such uh, uh, children that they can't, uh, they can't, just uh, get past that and just look at the stuff that they like. All right. Anyways, popularity, <clears throat> popularly disliked in the modern zeitgeist, Rowling no longer holds the critical weight she once did with many uh, disregarding her opinion and stance, unwilling to support the views and work of the transphobe. Um, in consequence, many boycotted the latest Fantastic Beast movie with the secrets of Dumbledore. Oh, and with the secrets of Dumbledore on uh, on course to barely break even and make back its uh, staggering two mil two hundred million dollar budget, clutching hold of the franchise, Rowling is suffocating the Wizarding world with an anaconda squeeze, draining it of its uh, eccentricity, pleasure, and ultimately its magic. I disagree with that one hundred percent. 
100%. With the third film of the Fantastic Beasts series likely to be the last, now would be the perfect time for J.K. Rowling to relinquish control of the Wizarding World brand with George Lucas-type deal worth billions. Now, before I get on, to, oh no, I do want to read because they, they mentioned George Lucas a little bit more. Okay, and I do, I have very strong thoughts about this and I will tell you because I think that's the end of this article. Okay, good, good, good. Well, let me get rid of this big ass thing to subscribe. Oh, wait, no, it's not. Oh, yes, it is, because this is, uh, yeah, that's going on to him. Okay, sorry, 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 guys. Much like Lucas created a beloved series from the ground up in Star Wars, then proceeded to leave this uh, uh, stangent, stangent, oh my gosh, stagnant franchise shortly after the release of the prequel trilogy in 2005. J.K. Rowling is in a position where she can make more money by handing the franchise over rather than struggling with cons uh, uh, constant uh, creative toil without control. Warner Brothers would have, without control, Warner Brothers would have the final say in all Wizarding World projects, including movies, video games, and much more, breathing new life into the series that is begging for re-innovation. Now, I just want to say before I get onto this, so J.K. Rowling has one of the best deals ever, ever when it comes to this franchise. Nothing gets uh, done without her say-so. They can't, they can't uh, cast somebody. That's why all she decided all the people in the, uh, the original movies, the Harry Potter movies, they all had to be British or, you know, from the UK or whatnot. Um, that you could not, um, she, she has to have the final say, the final, give the final go ahead before anything is done. Anything is done. Um, and uh, good on her for getting that kind of deal because that is just like unheard of these days. Um, and I, I think that let me finish this article because it's only two more paragraphs and then I will tell you my full blown opinion on this for the perfect nostalgia play the company could consider for example a film series about the order of the phoenix in which the younger versions of the beloved characters such as Albus Dumbledore James Potter Lily Potter Remus Lupin Oh, oh gosh, Rubius Hagrid, I don't know why I said Rubius Lupin, Hagrid, and many more return to the big screen. Or how about focusing on the international wizarding schools that were barely explored in the Goblet of Fire or even the high flying potential of a Quidditch sports flick? This I agree with 100%. There is um, a, there is rumor, but it's really happening that they are planning a TV series over at HBO Max, but they can't do it because of rights and everything, copyrights and everything, and they've signed all this stuff over. So they have to wait till all that is done and then they will start a tv show over there and all of these examples sound fantastic um i do however uh they mentioned that the third one is probably the last of the movies i agree with that but i do think they should finish them at least have one more to wrap it all up um but it was supposed to be five movies i it's obviously not going to be five movies now but i do think that if they if they aren't going to do this fan the, like finish out the five movies i honestly think they should do one more to wrap it all up you know bring down the budget and be like listen jk uh, because this third movie was the best of the series and i thought it was really good and i thought it was a step in the right direction i thought the second one the that first five the first scene from that second movie the crime of crimes of Grindelwald was fantastic. That is like one of out of all the Harry Potter Wizarding World, including Harry Potter. That is one of my favorite scenes out of the entire Wizarding World uh, film catalog. It's so good. I absolutely loved it when Grindelwald escapes from that carriage prison thingy. Uh, it was so good, so good. And if you didn't like that scene, I don't know what to tell you because you may not like the movie. The movie's not that great, but that scene is fantastic. It's my favorite scene. It's my favorite scene. Okay, let me read this last paragraph and then I'll get on to the rest of this. As far as the, the TV shows goes, this is these are all good ideas. I think that he's right. I want to see more of the Wizarding Schools. I would love to see a Quidditch is amazing. I love those Quidditch sequences in the uh, movies. Um, and I would even love to see, you know, um, stuff about, you know, the Ministries of Magic, you know, uh, just like what goes on there. I always find those very interesting also. Okay. The Wizarding World um, radiates creative promise with a wealth of colorful ideas and eccentric characters to follow and explore. But the first step to allow Warner Brothers to explore such uh, prosperity is to offer the dishonored gatekeeper a handsome fee. Now, first off, 
they would have to pay. They would have to pay generously for it, like he said, or handsome, handsomely. But uh, they would have to pay her a buttload of money for her to sell out. And I think this is the worst decision. If J.K. Rowling makes this decision to sell it, it is the worst decision she could possibly ever make. And I'll tell you why. And they brought up George Lucas, and I'm glad they did because I, George Lucas sold off Star Wars. And I can tell you, before George Lucas star, uh, sold off Star Wars to Disney and after uh, with, with uh, the, the first one, what was that one called? The Force Awakens, okay? The Force Awakens. From then past that, or uh, from the, the, there before that, uh, before The Last Jedi, every year, me personally, as a consumer of Star Wars and a fan of Star Wars, I bought so much merchandise from Star Wars. I bought... Uh, action figures, shirts, bags, coffee mugs, every, I bought all that stuff from the force, even from the force awakens, even though I was like, when I first thought I was like, Oh, so good. And now that I look back on, it, I was like, mm, it really was. And people are like, it's an homage. Oh, get the hell out of here with that nonsense. It was a, just a copy carbon copy. JJ Abrams sucks, but he's not the conversation, the, the subject of this conversation. Um, from the last Jedi to now I have literally bought nothing of star wars and i will never buy any more merchandise from star wars again i wa i have disney plus and i do watch the star wars shows but as far as movies go i'll be hesitant to go see it in the movie theater i'll probably just wait until it goes on uh disney plus um you know um and i you know uh as far now moving over to harry potter my entire office i have decorated in nothing but harry potter stuff and I know a lot of people want to be like, and I've gotten into arguments about this. A lot of people want to be like, well, if you buy anything that's um, licensed or if you buy anything that's brand new, like, you know, you buy the new books because the art, the cover art is different. You are supporting JK Rowling. And that means that you believe in what she said. And I tell that person, uh, you are incorrect. Uh, just because I buy a Harry Potter book doesn't mean I agree with JK Rowling. And I'm sorry, I am not going to buy some hand-me-down books from eBay just because Miss Rawling has an opinion that I may not agree with. I may agree with her 100%, that, and that's why I'm buying it. But whether or not I agree with what she said or not, I don't care what she said. I literally give zero F-bombs about what J.K. Rawling says on Twitter. I am going to buy brand new stuff from the 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 manufacturer i will not be buying it from susan from Toluth, minnesota i don't know if that's a place uh who decided she wanted to you know fix up her kitchen so she's selling all her crap and her knickknacks and tchotchkes i don't want her crap i want new crap i want brand new stuff okay and i can tell you right now if jk rowling sells off harry potter the wizarding world to warner brothers they will bastardize it they will turn into something that I am 110% not interested in, and they will lose me as a customer. I will sell all of this stuff, and I will no longer buy it, buy uh, anything uh, Harry Potter, uh, because I am not interested in that. I'm not interested in it. Star Wars has suffered. Um, every franchise that has been sold off has suffered uh, because they turn it into something that is not recognizable. And I think that whether or not you like Fantastic Beasts, the franchise, and it is it is for more adults than it is for smaller children, which is, I think, a mistake. Um, it still doesn't take away the magic for someone like me, you know, a huge Potterhead. And you get some people that are not Potterhead. They aren't like me where they go out and they spend, you know, thousands of dollars a year on merchandise, uh, you know, or, you know, or, or other things. Uh, on Harry on this kind of stuff but they they've got an opinion about it and they're like oh well I can't enjoy the movies okay fine don't watch the movies don't watch the movies okay nobody cares nobody cares about your opinion I don't care about your opinion okay I, I don't care about you um, and then when it goes and, and it's like Star Wars you get the Disney Star Wars fans and and their whole thing is like well you love the 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 trilogy that you grew up with okay so uh, I like the better one. You like the one that makes zero freaking sense. And that's exactly what they're going to do with, with uh, Wizarding World and Harry Potter if uh, J.K. Rowling sells it off. So 
if JK Rowling is watching this, and I know she is because uh, I'm very famous to her, don't sell it. You've got a fan right here. I'm going to buy this stuff. I'm going to go see your movies uh, in the theater, no matter what. I just, uh, yeah, that's my, that's, uh, that's my story. Okay. So that's the article that I'm reading for you guys. Again, I'll leave the link for it down below. Tell me, what do you guys think about this? Do you think JK Rowling should give up her rights to this uh, franchise? Or do you think she should just hold on strong and just be like, listen, that, that theme park is making money and she's going to make money off that theme park. I can't wait to go. I've never been, which bums me out, but I'm poor. I know. It's, well, why do you keep spending thousands of dollars a year on Harry Potter stuff? Calm down, sister. Okay. This stuff, I, I gather it up and, and stuff. And uh, plus, yeah. I'm, anyways. All right, you guys, that's um, my uh, uh, thoughts on this whole thing. Uh, tell me, what do you guys think about this? Do you think that JK Rowling should sell off her, um, her rights to Harry Potter, or do you think she should keep a hold of it? Cause it's hers and she made it and she's a strong independent woman. And people are just scared of that these days uh, because she had one hot take that people don't like. I mean, it's, it's very, it's very weird. Um, yeah. Okay. That's all I got for you guys. Tell me what you guys think. Go ahead and leave all your comments in that section down below. If you like this video, go into the like button. You know, I won't mind. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I'd greatly appreciate it. And I will see you guys on my next uh, video. You guys have a good day. Bye.